What's going on everybody and today we're going to be looking at Ghost Recon Wildlands, my most anticipated game of 2017 thus far. Now the very first thing that you're going to see is just some gameplay. I will show a few things that we did find outside the map. We were able to get outside and find a whole bunch of stuff. But right now, I'm just going to show you some gameplay that we were goofing off, throwing a guy into a trunk, blowing him up, killing him, and stuff like that. Now, Ghost Recon Wildlands is definitely an open-world shooter that is third-person, first-person when aiming. But you can do first-person when aiming down sights. This game is definitely a lot funner with a group. The AI that you start with, if you're solo, is kind of a little, to say, dumb in a loose terms. They're not very smart. You can tell them where to go and everything, but once you tell them, they don't really follow you. They don't really stay close to you at all. They kind of wander off way off into the distance. One of the cool things, though, is that this game is definitely really, really cool. Um, it's definitely something that I'm going to be picking up on day one and grinding nonstop. Pretty much like I did with Division when it first came out. I still played Division. I'm just a little burnt out on it guys, so bear with me. When 1.6 comes, I'm going to try maybe getting back into it, but I'm really into Wildlands and looking forward to that. I have Sniper Elite 4 coming out here real soon. I have Horizon Zero Dawn coming out at the end of this month, and then Wildlands comes out. So those are going to be the three games that I focus on next, and then maybe Division in between a few of them, or maybe Division a little bit between before then. I also have had a lot of real life stuff go on recently to prevent me from making videos every single day and keeping up with it as much as I would like. I'm hopefully going to have it stable here real soon so that I can get these videos back on a, on a regular schedule and I can start getting content out to you guys and I apologize for that. Now the gunsmithing in this game as you just saw is incredible. You can change the paint on your gun which I'm going to go through quite a few of them, all of them right here for you. You can also see that you can renew your paint, so actually while you're using your gun, it will start deteriorating the paint and actually getting spots on it where it is not as good looking like a fresh coat of paint, almost like you see in Counter-Strike. What you can do is you can renew the paint to where it looks pristine and really clean and cool looking, or you can leave the rusted and nasty look on it if you want. The other cool thing is you can change every single thing about your weapon. It is extremely, extremely in-depth. I would almost compare it to Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Future Soldier had a few extra things Wildlands doesn't have, such as the gas system and everything like that. Now, Wildlands has pretty much all of the basics in a weapon, but it is extremely more customizable than any other game that is out so far, other than Future Soldier, but that's a last-gen console game, so we're not going to really compare the two between now and then. You can change the stock, the barrel, the scope, the magazine, the trigger, the hand stop, or a grenade launcher if you'd like. This game is incredibly in-depth. Now, at the start of the game, you actually create your character. I created a girl. I created a girl. I made a really cool looking, something that I would like all blacked out with a bandana on, because I'm big into sniping games, and I've always been a fan of the sniping mechanics in games and stuff like that. Unfortunately, Divisions kind of lacks in that department for me with bullet drop and everything into consideration, like weather and everything. This game actually does have bullet drop in it. It's not as intense as Battlefield, but it still has bullet drop, which is really cool for somebody that's really big into sniping. Now, though you create your character at the very beginning of the game when you first load up, you can go into your menu where the map and the skills and everything are, and if you go to the loadout section, you can edit your appearance at any time you'd like. You can change your character completely. It's a really cool feature because of a lot of games, once you create your character, you can't recreate them or do anything to them. The other thing I want to point out is it's an open world shooter game. This game has the largest map I have seen in a long time. This game is bigger, the map in this game is bigger than Skyrim, it is bigger than Witcher. This map is absolutely huge. Now you might say, oh the beta was really short and the beta was really small. Well, it's not really that small. If you take a car and you go all the way around the barrier of the beta area, not even going into the middle section, but if you just go around the barrier, that right there is a good 45 minutes to an hour long drive. You could get outside the map, however, certain areas of it in the beta were not loaded in, they weren't graphically loading, so you couldn't go everywhere. 
I do go through the skills right here so you can see everything. You can actually get a feel for, you know, what's going to be the most important when you do get the game, what's going to be the least important when you get the game, how do you want to play. It's very versatile to the player and how they want to play and their play style, which is a really cool aspect that I love about this game is that there is a thing for everybody. If you want to snipe, you can snipe. If you want to be a running gun, you can be a running gun. If you want to be the spotter, you can be a spotter. It's a really versatile game that I'm actually extremely excited to get a squad on and actually have them play certain ways to where we can complete missions perfectly. Now there's also an aspect where you can go in loud and you can just cause a whole bunch of ruckus or you can go stealthy and try to take out the entire base without even alerting anyone or setting off any alarms. When this game comes out, my goal and a buddy of mine, we have actually put together a good idea. We're going to actually try to do every base or missions. We're going to try to replay almost the entire story and do it completely silent. Perfect runs, no alarms, no alerts, no nothing. We alert somebody, yes, it's not the end of the mission or anything like that. You can obviously continue because you, you can go all out and be loud if you want. But we want to try to be stealthy as that's what Ghost Recon has actually been in the past. You had to be as stealthy as you could be, almost like the old Splinter Cell games. Now this game in particular, it has no cover system to where you actually jump into cover. You kind of kneel behind it, and when you want to shoot, you will actually your character will duck out of cover, and then you can when you stop shooting, he'll duck right back into cover. I actually like this mechanic a lot because it allows you to take cover. It allows you to be in cover and not have to press extra buttons and do extra animations to get into cover or out of cover. It's a very free-flowing game. There's also things like you can have people help you out. They're called Rebels. Now, the Rebels are obviously in the green bar. They are the green characters that you'll see in the game. They can also call in mortars for you. They can come and fight for you. They can cause diversions. They can spot bases, and they can also drop off a car for you or a vehicle depending on how you upgrade it. You also have the red enemies which are the normal enemies which are the Santa Blanca cartels. These are the most notorious enemy that you will find in this game and they are all over the place. The Unidad forces are the purple enemies. Now these guys are a little bit tougher. They will call in backup if they need it. They will call in helicopters to chase you down. Me and a buddy actually when we were in a five skull area which I'm going to talk about in a little bit we actually had about eight helicopters chase us, and it was intense. Now, the thing about, I hear everybody saying is, it's too easy even on ghost difficulty. It's too easy, it's the beta. Here's the thing that you guys have to remember. The beta is in a one skull area. That boss that you face and everything is in a one skull area. So even on the hardest difficulty, on ghost difficulty, you're still in only a one skull territory. This game has two separate difficulties integrated into it. They have the skull system, which is the territory difficulty, and then they have your actual game difficulty. Now, if you go into one of the five skull areas and you turn on ghost mode, trust me, it is difficult. It is not the easiest thing in the world like you had on the beta. The beta, you could easily just run around and do whatever you wanted, but in those five skull areas where we had the eight choppers chase me and a buddy of mine, it was not easy and we were playing on novice difficulty which is the lowest and it still was not that easy to get away we actually had to revive a couple of times on each other just to get out of the area away from all the helicopters so on ghost difficulty it's gonna be extremely hard now because we got outside the map I'm gonna show you some of the things that maybe other people haven't shown you there are only brief little spots but I do have a tank footage uh, I do have an underground area, so all of this above ground, some spots there are underground passages that you will actually have to go into, so that's even more of a map for you to explore. I have a little bit of like a Red Sea, it's really cool. We kind of stumbled upon it when we were looking for one of the hidden weapons in the beta um, outside the map. It, we dubbed it the Red Sea. It's really cool because the lake, it's like a red lake um, or a sea, and it's all red. You also have flamingos flying above it that you can actually fly into and everything, which is really, really cool. We actually, we pretty much got off on that. It was a really, really cool scene. It was just graphically and everything that went into it, I can't imagine how much they had put into that area. Now, everything that you do in this game is tracked stat-wise, like longest shot, kills, deaths, um, how you kill people and stuff like that. It's all tracked in the game system, which is really cool. They can keep track of everything. 
Something else that's really got me interested in this game is the fact that, yes, this is a four-player co-op or a single player with three AI buddies helping you along. They have announced, you can look this up, but Ubisoft has said that there will be a competitive PvP aspect to this game. Now, what does that mean exactly? I'm not too sure. Is PvP going to be la at launch? I would hope so, because this game would be perfect for PvP. Is PvP going to be in, like, a free update or a, down or a DLC in the future? I don't know. There's no telling. Nobody knows. So everybody that's worrying about PvP, I can tell you this. Yes, it might not have been in the beta. We don't know if it's going to be in the game at launch or later, at a later date. But there will be a competitive PvP, as they have stated officially on their site. You can actually look up Ubisoft, and they have said it. This game is extremely good and everything. The beta alone was a good three to four hours worth of gameplay, not even including every single one of the side missions or all the collectibles that you can get. But in the basics, it was around nine hours long. It was a very, very good beta. Now, one thing to mention is that you may see a bunch of green boxes when you're running around. These green boxes are supplies. You will need supplies and skill points to upgrade your skills and unlock things. So I just want to give you guys my rundown on Ghost Recon Wildlands. For my official perspective on it and my official review on it, I would say pick it up. Yes, there might not be PvP in it now, but there will be soon. Even if there isn't, I think this game is definitely a good buy, even without the PvP aspect. This game, the map on it is huge. The difficulty is just right. Like I said, you have to keep in mind, different territories have their own different difficulty along with your actual game difficulty. The other thing to keep in mind is that the playtime is extremely long. I think the playtime in the overall game will probably be around 150 hours to 200 hours if I were to put like a quote on it. If you have buddies to play with, make sure to hit them up because this game is a ton more fun with friends. I will say this though, and that is one thing that another more people are kind of curious about. This game uses what Call of Duty uses. It uses a peer-to-peer -peer hosting, not an actual server. So when you're trying to connect with people and it gives you the... I can't remember what it, it's called exactly. It's TAR something, but it's 0013 AIR. It could be your NAT status. If you're playing on a strict NAT, you're not going to be able to play with a whole bunch of your friends. An easy way around this that we have used in Call of Duty and everything is reset your router. Um, turn it off and turn it back on after about like a minute or two. And sometimes that will fix it. Sometimes restarting your console will fix it. But that's something to just keep in mind is that this is a peer-to-peer -peer hosting game without actual servers. So that could be kind of bad in the future when they do want to incorporate some PvP. But I would hope that they fix it and they would actually incorporate some servers because it would be amazing to have actual competitive PvP in this game on actual servers. So if it were me, guys... In my official decision, I would pick this game up for sure. No hesitation, I would pick this game up. It's a great game. It's got everything that you would want. As long as you're into shooters, I think you'll enjoy this game. Make sure to look forward into the open beta coming here real soon. It comes out on March 7th, I believe, as of right now. So probably either the weekend before launch or the weekend before that is probably when they'll do the open beta. So I'm going to go ahead and let this kick over to the rest of the gameplay. I have a few little clips showing you guys what I talked about earlier, the tanks and everything. I'm going to let them play right now. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. they get.
Thank <laughs> you.